Hi guys, this is JP. I just got a little tip on how to work with Photoshop when you want to animate with it. Um, right now I've got Flash open and um, Flash works pretty much like, uh, it's kind of designed to work the way an animator wants it to. Um, so for example, you can use it in the same way a 2D animator would draw and then flip the page over to show to draw another pose and flip between the two pa the two poses and it's pretty pretty crucial to animating to be able to just flip through um, just using your keys so for example I've got this this rabbit dude and that's my a pose that's the beginning and I just move to the next frame let me just turn on onion skinning so I can see where it is and uh, let's just say he's going to turn and look over to the to his right, I guess that is. So, as you can see, it's so much easier to kind of flip back and forward. And this is what pretty much every animator that's working um, in 2D and stop frame and CG, they're, they're often making the most of this method of just flipping through to see how the poses work and connect. So there's my B pose, and I don't know, let's have him do a little take as if he's surprised about something. Don't really know why I'm doing this, but I've started to I'll finish. So he's like, Whoa! and then let's just add another pose for his kind of final, oh my god, kind of moment. So, some pretty terrible animation, but if I just turn turn that off, you can see how I can just step through and flick through. And the cool thing is just I'm kind of able to adjust things on the fly. So that's how we animate in Flash or pretty much any 2D program. But the thing is, Photoshop doesn't make it very easy for you to work that way. And you might want to work that way just because Photoshop has some amazing... Uh, you know, natural. You can use your, you can use your the kind of brushes and pencils that you like to work with, or you can use filters. You can use all the things that Photoshop gives you um, as a graphic tool, but it just doesn't quite make it so easy to work as an animation tool or a storyboarding tool because this is relevant to storyboarding too. Um, but you can make it easier by just doing a few tweaks, and this is what you need to do. So let's just go to, um, so I'm just going to open my timeline window. And this is going to give me two options, as you can see down here. Let's put that in the middle. You've got create frame animation and create video timeline. You want to ignore that for the moment, at least for this method I'm going to talk about. We're going to stick with frame animations. So that's going to put up my first frame. You'll see underneath it's there's a time for the frame which is zero seconds no delay you want to keep it on no delay because you want to be in control every frame you do uh, is going to be a frame of your film you don't want Photoshop to give that frame a certain chunk of time which isn't um, one one twenty fourth of a second or one thirtieth of a second whatever timing you choose for your film okay so now how do we get Photoshop to behave in the same way as Flash does? So I can take my A pose and flip through um, to my B pose. So here's, I've, uh, I've just clicked on this um, new frame there and I've got frame 2. So what I could do um, is basically maybe make that frame if I just bring in my layers window here, I'm going to just start that again because I didn't do something very clever here. I'm going to go to frame one and draw my rabbit in again. Just bear with me a second. So I'm going to make that frame visible. Let's just choose a brush tool. Okay, so here's my rabbit dude. So frame A, that's the first one. So I'm going to bring it onto frame 2. So what I could do is turn the opacity down in my layers window 
and go on to the next layer and make frame B. And you can kind of turn it off, on and off, in your layers palette, for example. But it doesn't quite have that same effect of flipping from one image to another, which is really important for an animator. I can do it like this. But that's kind of unwieldy because I'm just clicking between the two. So what I need to do is set up a little action. So that's where this window comes in. That's the actions palette. And if you don't know about actions yet, they're really worth getting involved in because they can make your workflow so much smoother. You can set actions up for things that you do repeatedly, that you do often, and it just becomes very smooth. But what I want to do is just set up an action for uh, flipping between the two frames. It's really silly that Photoshop doesn't have it yet, uh, but you can always set up an action for something that you want to do. So I make a new action and I'll go, um, I'll call it next frame. Uh, and the key here is to give it a, a function key. So uh, something that you'll use on the keyboard just to switch to, to activate the action. I'm going to make it F12. Record. And it's going to be very simple. I'm just going to, on the timeline window, I'm just going to step to the next frame. And here you can see the action is recorded. Activate next animation frame. I'll press stop. Then, just to um, be really exciting, I'm going to make another one. Previous frame, I need to give that a function key. It's going to be F11. You can guess what's going to happen. So, activate previous action animation frame. Okay, so now that's done, I can get rid of my a um, actions window. And if I flip between um, F11 and F12, I've got my uh, flipping animation friendly uh, method of, use of working with Photoshop, which is just kind of, it sounds like a kind of nerdy tweaky thing, but it makes the workflow so much more natural and so much more like animation. Now, the actions thing can come in again if you want to make so kind of automate something that you're going to do a lot. And what am I going to do a lot? I'm going to create a new frame, um, and a new kind of sheet of paper, as it were. So I can make an action for that. So I'll call it new frame. And this one, I might actually give it another uh, an F12 function key, but this time with shift, just because Sometimes I prefer just to have a, a shift and a key to press to do the action. And so now that it's recording, I'm going to make a bring up my timeline window. I'm going to make a new frame, so it's going to record that. Then I'm going to add another little step to the action, which is to decrease the opacity of the frame and make a new layer. And that's it. So what it's done is it's made a new frame and it's made a new layer for me to draw in, but it's also kept the layer below but at a decreased opacity. So I c I've got a line to draw to, to use as a guide. Um, some people might not want that, but I find it pretty handy. So that's it. That's all my actions done. And now I can pretty much animate however I want and just enjoy um, doing some rabbit animation. So uh, I can step through, dum, 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 dum. And if I press Shift F12, which is the key that I assign to the action, I get a new frame with my kind of ghosted frame underneath. So uh, it's all pretty convenient for animation. And because I do storyboarding for a living, I use this method of storyboarding a lot. I can do almost an entire sequence in one Photoshop document with these animation frames and then export them all out as JPEGs or whatever kind of image I want at the end uh, of it. So it's a really fluid and smooth and fun way of working. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.